<laughs> okay, so forget about that part. Our buses are at 1.30 to 2.30. If you'd like to tell other people when your flight is, that's up to you. But I, again, emphasize nothing else will happen if you write your name on this phone. It's bored unless one of you approaches each other, okay? This is not us doing anything. Okay, uh, it's time for the final talk of the day, and it's uh, Richard David from the University of Stockholm. And yeah, th thanks to the organizers for this great workshop. It's, it's, it's great fun, I think. Um, what I, of course, my title is, is overly generic. Uh, so what I want to talk about is, is, is one reason one point that is philosophically interesting about st string theory, and that is related to, to a more general question in the context of, of, of quantum gravity. And it's, it's the, the, the question of, of the position of an individual theory in the context of theory succession or not. So there may, might be final, final theory claims or there might not be final theory claims. The question is how how does uh, quantum gravity play out in this with respect to this question? So so what I will do is first I will set the stage with respect to the issue of, of finality, and then point out that there may be some tension between finality claims and the issue of, of the chronicle incompleteness in the context of quantum gravity. And I will argue that from the perspective of string theory, this generally philosophical question has, uh, one may suggest a specific way of, of viewing uh, that issue. Um, so that's what I, what, I, what I want to do. So let's start with, with the uh, what one may call the 20th century view on the progress of science, which is that typically scientific theories can be developed uh, within a reasonable time, and um, their aim is to account for a known set of data and to make uh, testable predictions. And the expectation is that uh, they will survive or they will succeed for, for a certain period of time but at some stage, they will be superseded by a new theory. And some considerations in the background here are that falsification, of course, is a cornerstone of, of, of scientific progress. And it's often also the case that one has reasons to assume that a given theory cannot stand on its own at all, or it cannot be extended towards accounting for new phenomenology. So, and, and in particular in the context of, of, of high energy physics, one may say that Landau poles are, are give one, one, one reason in, in the first sense, and non-renormalizability uh, may also be, suggest uh, something to that, to that end. So what, 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 what one projects is an infinite um, um, sequence of uh, theory succession, where infinite, of course, has to be taken with a grain of salt because there is no strong argument why one would expect an infinite uh, sequence, actually. But the idea is that one should behave as if one hadn't any reason to assume that that sequence would, would end at some stage. So uh, to draw a picture, it would be of that kind, so we have we are somewhere here that we have periods of, of developing theories and theories periods where theories are successful, and at some stage they run into anomalies and, and will be uh, there will be the need to, to develop uh, a new one and then this is sub theory succession, and we are somewhere here on on this time axis that will continue, so to say, for, for forever. So we have a certain construction period, a certain lifetime, and the idea is that the time of, until the end of science is, so to say, infinite. We will always continue to require uh, new theories after, after a while. Now, it is important to point out that the canonical view of theory succession was not always canonical. In the early periods, 
of, 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 of scientific reasoning an entirely different paradigm of, 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 of what, how to understand the scientific theory was, was prevalent. In particular, in, in the early, in the 17th century, people like Francis Bacon or, or Descartes thought that actually the development of the scientific method itself was the crucial step towards what one may call full enlightenment. So, so the reason why up to their, their, their time period, no one had really figured out nature was that people didn't argue scientifically. And once um, the, the basic uh, principles of scientific reasoning had been established, the idea was, so okay, so now we can do it. So now we can just fill in the blanks and, and in, in the, the lifetime or two, we will be finished. finished. And we will have a, a scientific picture uh, of, of the light, so of, 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 of the world. So, so there was a, uh, the understanding that final theories would, would be imminent. If one looks at Newton mechanics after uh, the understanding that action at the distance was problematic for a, uh, for, for a scientific theory had, had become unpopular, was for a long period of time understood to to be final, to be the final, final theory about the final word about, about, about gravity. And for a shorter period of time, that was also uh, by many physicists taken to be the case with respect to Maxwell's electromagnetism. And of course, what, what fits in here is this famous story about uh, Max Planck, who says that, that, that his um, potential supervisor of his PhD thesis suggested that it was not a good idea to go into fundamental physics because the fundamental theories in fundamental physics had been developed. So what, what was to be expected in physics was that just those f theories should be made, uh, should, should, should be, should be uh, spelled out in more detail and nothing more has to be done. So that's at the very late stages of, of, of the 19th century. Of course, one must say that in the 19th century, the idea of, of this, um, the modern view, so to say, on, on scientific theory was already uh, upheld and developed by, by, by many others. So there, there were different opinions about, about, about the status of, of scientific theories. But there was, it was not, a, the, the, the idea that there is this infinite sequence was clearly not uh, universally accepted. And only the revolutions of, of, of special relativity, general GR and, and quantum mechanics, established this profound mistrust in the status quo, even if the status quo was, was very successful. And that was, this mistrust was increased by observations about of the sequence of theories covering ever higher energy levels in the context of high energy physics. So this paradigm of reaching towards ever higher energy levels, um, of course, strengthened this idea of an infinite sequence of, of theory succession. So the canonical view is a 20th century phenomenon and is supported by the failure of previous overly optimistic views. Now, quantum gravity reopens that case. And it reopens it first because another perspective on the development of scientific theories is the perspective of understanding it in terms of a program of unification of forces or unification of, of, of theories that, that characterize or represent different patches of, of, of the universe. And the understanding is that if understood in this sense, the program of unification of forces may be concluded once a full theory of quantum gravity has, has been developed. The second point is that it is difficult to make sense of testing energy scales because, beyond the Planck scale because once you try to focus, to, to, to focus high energies on, on, on small space patches, you, you run into, into, into you, you generate black holes which, which, which prevent um, more, 
more observation of, of, of those higher energy scale phenomenology. Now, starting from those general considerations, uh, string theory presses the case uh, further because there are a number of considerations that more directly suggest that string theory, if viable at all, uh, could be a final theory. I will mention three arguments of in, in to, to that end. The first argument is that theory is a, a universal theory of, 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 of fundamental phenomenology, or is meant to be a universal theory of, of all known phenomenology. So, of course, it's not the first time a, a set of theories is understood to, to, to cover a known phenomenology. As mentioned before, in the late 19th century, people, some people thought that Newtonian gravitation and electrodynamics could do the job. But the claim in the context of string theory is a little more powerful because string theory is a theory that aims at giving a full unified account of all interactions. And if one subscribes to this unification uh, research program, this gives a, a stronger, suggests to, to a higher degree, let's say, that string theory um, might serve as, as final theory on, on that account. The second point is that string theory as a theory cannot be extended. So it doesn't allow for additions of any kind. One main reason for this is that there are no free parameters. So there are, there, there are no ways to couple string theory to something beyond it. So you cannot say, OK, string theory uh, covers some phenomenology, and then I can couple it, it, it further, and my, I, I might add something to this. Um, this the, the scope of string theory, therefore, since it doesn't have free parameters, is fixed by, by its general posits, which are basically the principles of quantum mechanics, and from a perturbative perspective, the extendedness of, of elementary objects, which means that any extension must be based on a very different theory. It doesn't mean, in principle, that string theory cannot serve an effective theory as an effective theory for a more fundamental one, even though we will come to the third point which suggests that that may be less plausible than in, in other cases. But clearly, it must be an entirely uh, new theory. So this is something new, of course, because in most other cases in physics, um, there was this possibility of extension. So one, one, one might, for example, um, we have heard about, about ideas to, to, to complement GR without unification. Uh, one can have ideas to add graviton to a gauge field theory, as we also, also heard, and, and, and so on. So not every project is of the kind that you, you are not, uh, that, that even if it covers all phenomenology, it cannot be extended. So in conjunction, those two points, one and two, the, the last slide and, and, and this one, suggest that string theory currently needs no extension and actually it doesn't allow for it. So the suggestion is maybe there is no need to go beyond, beyond that theory. And then there is the third point, which is mostly emphasized by, by string theory, string theorists themselves, which is that string theory based on duality relations implies that there is a minimal length scale. So in string theory, um, one, one characteristic of string theory is that duality relations work between different formulations of the theory, and they posit fairly different elementary objects and different structure, but they are empirically equivalent. And there is a, a translation manual between, between, between them. And one of those duality relations is t-duality, which invert, inverts uh, length scales. So t-dual theories offer 
different descriptions, for example, of movements of closed strings in a compact defined dimension. And one has this duality relation that transfers a, a, a string propagating in, let's say, a, a large radius dimension to a dual picture where the string has a certain winding number um, along a smaller, a smaller compact defined dimension. So the, the, the characteristic scale here is, 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 is the string length. Now, and this uh, generalizes, one has to say, to uh, the general picture that any statement about a, a, a length scale smaller uh, than the string length can be translated via a duality relation, via a duality relation, into a statement about a length scale above, above the string scale. Uh, which means that, in effect, you have a minimal, string, uh, minimal length scale, which is, which is the string scale. <coughs> so, if string theory is valid at its characteristic scale, the idea is no new theory can kick in at a higher energy or lower distance scale. And therefore, string theory, if valid at its characteristic scale, uh, seems to be final. Now, this uh, final theory claim, which is considered to be the most forceful final theory claim of string theory, of course, raises a basic worry which is that the, it's a final theory claim that is entirely developed within the string theory framework. So one may say it, it, it in effect argues that if string theory is true, then it is true. It seems in a, in, in a weird way um, circular. So one may say um, if the string theory only serves as an effective theory that is valid up to the, up to the string scale, there might be a more fundamental one um, that differs from the theory if you go beyond that, beyond that scale. And that, of course, is not excluded, which means that a final theory claim based on t-duality alone um, is not overly convincing. So the question is, is it meaningless? And I, I don't have the time to to say too much about that here, but uh, just in a nutshell, I want to say it's not the case. And it's not the case because one has to understand final theory claims within, the, within a broader context. So one has to understand the string theory in the context of what I call limitations to scientific underdetermination. In the absence of limitations to underdetermination at a conceptual level uh, that are implemented or, or inferred at a conceptual level, a uh, final theory claim of that kind would be fairly worthless. However, if you assume that there are no alternatives to the given theory, or it's very unlikely that there are alternatives to the theory, to the extent you can make that case, it is the question whether or not string theory is final reduces to the question whether or not it is, it is, it has to be ex extended or replaced at a certain energy scale. So when I say it is, it, it turns, it, uh, it raises, it turns a global question into a local question. And the final theory claim, without, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not able to, to go into the details here, but the final theory claim of this kind can be understood, I argue, as a claim that turns a global question into a local one. So in conjunction with an assessment of under, scientific underdetermination at the local level, it can have some significance. It doesn't mean uh, that it, it, it proves in any way the finality of, of the theory, of course, even if if valid at, at, at the characteristic length scale of, of the theory, but it has some um, relevance. So in conjunction, one might think this set of arguments may suggest 
But actually, if string theory, if it is a viable theory at all, may be a final theory. So we start with the canonical view of theory succession and think, actually, that's not valid anymore. We may have something like this. We may have a final theory claim a situation where we have arrived here, and we are somewhere here in that red arrow developing a final theory, and if it is fully developed, once it is fully developed, that's basically the end of the end of fundamental science, let's say, the end of, of, of developing new fundamental theories. And the lifetime of, of the theory from then onwards goes all the way to infinity. So that would be, a, one may say, a naive final theory perspective. However, if one looks at the situation in quantum gravity today, and in particular with respect to string theory, something rings false about that picture. If we um, view theory, string theory at this point, <coughs> it is 50 years old, and it's still solidly in this red arrow regime here. And there is, in the foreseeable future, no one would expect that it, it leaves that arrow. Um, so something, somehow, the theory seems to be caught in, 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 in the context of, of, of the process of, of developing uh, the theory, which may raise the question, OK, a theory that, that, that may be final but, but has no perspective on being completed uh, may be a questionable enterprise. So how, what, to, what to do, or how to, what to make of, of, of such a situation? And even, even more strikingly, what one observes if one looks at the development, the evolution of string theory, is that the theory underwent fundamental shifts in its, during its lifetime that are reminiscent of theory succession and in a way even reminiscent of, 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 of Kungian revolutions to a certain extent. Not, not in all respects, but, but, but in some respects. For example, when one, when, if, one, if one looks at the, at, the, at the theory after the second string revolution, there was huge excitement and, 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 and high degree of optimism with respect to completing the theory. And um, that um, uh, was diminished step by step which, due to conceptual problems, which may be compared to a theory encountering empirical anomalies. Of course, it's something different, but in, somehow in the, in, in the, with respect to the dynamics of theory evolution, if it, is, it is kind of reminiscent of, of what's going on. So there is something comparable, though different, going on in the evolution of that theory. I just um, wrote down three examples of those processor revolutions. One of those revolutions actually is called a revolution by string theorists themselves, the second string revolution in, in, in 95. Then there is um, AES-CFD correspondence in 98 and, and landscape entropic reasoning. So I want to say a little bit about, about each of those. The second string theory revolution happened at the time when string theory was only known from a perturbative uh, perspective. So there was no, I, so un, up to this point, there is no full understanding of the theory. There is no full theory, actually. But um, there only was the understanding how to calculate uh, string scattering so on, 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 on some background in a, in, under certain conditions in, 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 in a perturbative way. Now, in 1995-96, it turned out, first, that a non-perturbative description of, of string theory is much more complicated than expected. Um, particularly, it involves higher dimensional objects, so-called brains, deep brains, for example. And um, it was, it was an, so those brains had been, had been conceptualized already earlier on, but at that time it was understood that, that they played a fundamental role in string theory, and they were required to reach out beyond the perturbative regime. And once uh, one made use of that, 
it turned out um, that the five different string theories, super string theories that, that, that could be con con, uh, constructed were connected by duality relations of the kind I, I already um, mentioned by t-dualities and, and, and s-dualities. And uh, what, in addition, it turned out that apart from those five string theories, there was um, an, a different theory, so-called M-theory, that was not really a, a, a string theory that was 11-dimensional rather than 10-dimensional, and um, that didn't really have have its own classical limits, while, while, while those five theories all have their own uh, classical limits. And it, it is very well understood what this theory actually amounts to, but the web of duality suggests that, that, that it should, such a formulation uh, should be there. So what happened here was that the the, the better understanding of the non-perturbative regime led to a situation where the richness of, of, of the theory was much better understood. And it was also understood that string theory, the string theory perspective, the actual string perspective, is not the only way of, of viewing uh, the situation. So there is something empirically equivalent to a genuine string theory representation um, that is not itself a string theory. ADS-CFD correspondence was, was, was uh, suggested only a few years later, and it suggests that um, there is a duality between a string theory on anti de Sitter space and a conformal uh, field theory on its boundary. So it even extends this uh, understanding that uh, there is empirical equivalence between genuine string theories and theories that are not string theories at all. So conformal field theory does not, does not contain gravitons at a, at a fundamental level, um, which, which it, is not a, it, it, it is not a theory of strings. So it's, it's something completely different and surprisingly um, there is a duality, there seems to be a duality relation uh, between, between those two theories. And there is the lingering suspicion, and there are some arguments in that direction, that this uh, duality relation can be extended to something like a general gauge gravity duality. If that is actually the case, it means that string theories are actually, strings are actually not essential to string theory. So the entire web of, of, of theories um, has different perspectives and only some of them are based on, on, the, on, on actual strings. So if strings are not essential to string theory, so what is it? What, what is the core of string theory at all, is the question. And we'll come back to that a little later. And the third, um, the third uh, so to big change, shift of perspective, maybe not of quite that significance, but also of, of, of high significance, is the emergence of, of the landscape con uh, concept. It was initially understood that string theory has the potential of being an extremely predictive theory. It was also understood that while there is only one way of constructing a string theory after, after, after having discovered the, the, the duality relations, that there, there, is a, there are very many possibilities to compactify this, this ten-dimensional uh, space of string theory. So there are potentially very many ground states of the theory. However, it was extremely difficult for a long time. No one knew, knew how to stabilize any of those radii of external dimensions. So it was not clear whether those ground states were stable. And the hope was that maybe there is some very intricate mechanism that is capable only of stabilizing very specific ground states, which would mean 
that the string theory is highly, highly selective with, the, with respect to, to actual ground states and therefore highly predictive. And um, in, in 2003 and, and, and following years, it was understood how one can actually stabilize compact dimension, at least in, 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 some, in the context of some approximation. And it turned out that based on those um, tools one could deploy, it was not difficult at all to stabilize them. So one could, one could stabilize an awful lot of, of, of ground states, which meant um, that the predictive power of the theory was dramatically reduced. And this, once again, um, brought about a, a quite substantial shift in the perspective on the theory, and in the also in the perspective on the relation between the fundamental theory that is unique and this huge uh, landscape, as they call it, of, um, that, that parathomizes the, 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 the ground states of, of the theory. So there are lots of ground states, lots of, so to say, possible theories at an effective level that can be extracted from the fundamental theory. And this um, generated new ways of dealing with the theory. For example, people tried to develop statistical methods for assessing the landscape, for assessing the predictiveness of the theory, therefore. And this also led to the emergence of anthropic reasoning uh, in the string theory context based based on the multiverse, based on, on, on the concept of eternal inflation. So what one observes is a fairly confusing uh, situation. On the one hand, string theory does posit a lot of new structure. It has no fundamental free parameters, and it offers, it has all those indications of of, of, of being final, but on the other hand, this striking lack of conceptual understanding, chronicle, when one may say, lack of conceptual understanding of string theory allows for revolutions, leaves the theory's core somewhat in the dark, and um, moreover, due to, to this landscape situation, even a good understanding of the fundamental theory may not actually uh, lead to, to, to a understanding to a good understanding of, of the predictive qualities of, of the theory. So some string theorists, therefore, prefer not to call string theory a theory at all at this point. Polyakov, for example, in a paper calls it a language. And David Gross um, calls string theory a framework. So it's a very let's say, a, in some sense, a, a, a modest uh, characterization of the theory. And it's also a somewhat surprising characterization, or let's say difficult to understand the role of that characterization, given that string theory seems to leave no room for any posits that can further specify the theory at a fundamental level. So what you would normally expect of a, of, of a language or a framework would be that that the framework provides basic tools for developing a theory, and then you introduce additional posits that specify the theory. And quite clearly, not, let's say nothing in string theory at this point suggests that anything of that kind is, 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 is possible at all. So even though it is, one can understand why people get the idea to call string theory language or a framework, it's also, it looks a little problematic, let's say. So is string theory a theory or a language or a framework? And, and I, would I would argue, argue that, that the distinction between, between language or framework on the one hand and theory actually blurs with the dwindling of scientific underdetermination. If we work in a context where we assume that there are different possibilities, there are different options to develop theories, then we would expect that actually a language, if there are many possible theory, a language should allow for 
for developing all of them, or at any rate, for being extended towards developing all of them. And the framework should, at any rate, allow for developing some of them. However, if, we, if there is a situation where scientific underdetermination seems to be absent, so where there is no, no, um, no there are no options in, in, in developing the theory, choices are actually reduced to language choices or, or, or framework choices. So one might argue that the context in which such a, this, the, the calling string theory a framework or calling it a language makes sense is maybe more plausible in a situation where people understand that there are no choices to be made at all. Which means that um, consistently using a language actually amounts to developing the theory. The conclusion from that would be that actually there may be an implicit final theory claim also in calling string theory a language or a framework. It is, it, is, it is a statement that kind of accounts for the peculiar situation the theory finds itself in, but it accounts for that peculiar situation before the background that there are no conceptual choices to be made. So no, no, no posits that, that, that actually specify um, the physics. So this leads to the question, why is string theory so difficult to, to complete? And of course, that's a, that, to answer that question would be develop, mean developing the theory, one may say. But one might speculate that probably dualities play an important role in this. They, they provide dualities, the discovery of dualities provided one interesting reason why, why this is the case. Maybe not the only reason, probably not the only reason, but one important reason. If one looks at, at, at the web of dualities, each of the well-defined dual theories today has a classical and low uh, curvature limit. So one can, when, when one found those theories based on thinking about them in terms of, 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 of those limits, actually of being close to those limits, in a perturbative regime and so on. But none of those limits actually allows for calculating the full theory, which means that shifting from one theory to the dual and exploiting the entire web of dual theory is actually necessary for getting better understanding, a better graph of, 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 of the theoretical concept overall. Additionally, dual formulations are not, they, they cannot be constructed easily from, by starting from one of the theories, but they have to be found by finding a translation manual between, between different theories. So, so, so usually the way um, dualities were discovered that the, was that, that, that theories were known for quite some time already, but they were not understood to be empirically equivalent and the conceptual progress then uh, provided the tools to, uh, for understanding that there is a duality relation between, between those. Which means that, that as long as one has not discovered the, the duality, the, the, let's say the horizon um, provided by the formulation one has at hand is, 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 quite, is, is quite close. So it's very difficult to look beyond, to reach out beyond that horizon without actually finding the the, the, the duality relation. So this, of course, raises a number of, 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 of questions without, with respect to, to, to judging the status of the theory. So, so the question, of course, the core question is, what is the right formulation for grasping the full theory, and why is it so difficult to find? And the, the default answer would be that, well, the, the math is so difficult, the theory is so difficult. But there are additional possible reasons for, for, 
for that. In particular, one reason that it might be the case that theories that don't have, uh, have a classical limit and therefore they, that are not easily developed may be crucial for, for understanding the theory. M theory, of course, is, a, is, is, is the prime example in, in, in that direction. So without that intuition, an intuition for that theory that stems from a classical limit, it may just be very difficult to, to, to develop that theory or to get to know anything of that theory. And the, uh, another argument, possible consideration, is that maybe there is no single formulation at all that can fully characterize the theory. Maybe even this entire web of, 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 of dualities it will always be necessary to understand the theory. So what this means is that finality and the chronically preliminary state of theories of quantum gravity from a string theory perspective seem to be deeply related. In the final theory, it seems, if we assume that, that string theory constitutes a, a final theory, progress is shifted towards finding new perspectives via duality relations. So there is something similar to theory succession going on in terms of finding different perspectives on the same, on the same theoretical concept based on, 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 on duality relations. So given that no individual perspective is sufficient for fully understanding the theory, one needs all of them. One may need all of them, and it's not clear how many perspectives actually uh, exist or how many perspectives are needed, which means that there is no plausible time horizon for completing um, the theory. The other point is that given that uh, the posits that, that ground individual perspectives or that are the base individual perspectives on the theory fully determine the theory. So each individual perspective fully determines the theory. It makes sense to talk about the theory in some sense. One may say that theories or ever turning the, those posits into a consistent theory amounts to. So one does have the concept of a theory that might be called final, even though one doesn't have an understanding of the theory, so to say or a, a, a well-developed, a full-fledged understanding of the theory. So on that basis, one may say that what used to be the infinite sequence of superseding theories now turns into the open sequence of discoveries of new perspective on, of, on, on one of the same theory. What is important to, to emphasize here is that this does not amount to, to a prediction that, that the discovery that there are infinitely many dual perspectives on the theory or anything of that kind. There is no reason to, to assume that. It should be compared to the previous position of, of the canonical view, where the idea is also not that there is any proof that there will be an infinite succession of theories. The idea is only that to do science at a given point or to understand the scientific process at a given point um, can be most adequately characterized by just assuming that there is no end to the sequence of, 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 of successive theories. So starting from this canonical view, we have seen that there is an inadequate view of final, of final theory from the perspective of, of string theory, which looks like that. And um, if we look at the view that would be suggested by string theory today, it would be a view of that kind, where there is, so to say, there is an eternal construction period of the final theory, which means that the construction period of the theory, the lifetime of the theory, and the time of, of until the end of fundamental science all reach up to to please time infinity. Thank you.
very much for the talk, Richard. Uh, I just have a, so I have a fairly quick question. So in, in this talk, you gave us, I mean, it was billed as, you gave us reasons for why string theory might be philosophically interesting. But it seems like you, you gave us reasons why it would be philosophically interesting to a philosopher of science. Um, and the reasons that you gave for it being interesting to a philosopher of science, in some sense, seem to pull against, well, to, to, to work against the reasons why a philosopher of physics might find string theory philosophically interesting. Um, you know, part of what makes a theory interesting for a philosopher of physics is that it sort of allows them to tease out sort of what the world would be like, a picture of what the world would be like according to that theory. And it seems like you've given us various reasons to believe that string theory is not in a, in a situation in which you can sort of legitimately do that. So the question is, do you think, do you also think that string theory is or has the potential to be interesting to philosophers of physics? And if so, how? I, I, I do think so. I mean, I, I fully agree. With your with with your assessment that that this aspect of string theory is, let's say, tends to make the theory suspicious from a, from from some philo philosophy of physics perspectives. Uh, that's that I think that's absolutely true. I would argue, however, and I also agree that as it stands, the theory makes it much more difficult than other theories. Um, to, to answer some of the classical questions that are, that are, that are posed in, in, in the philosophy of physics. However, I think that also from a philosophic, philosophy of physics perspective, very diff interesting new questions are, are raised, actually. In particular, the question is, so the, 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 there are two, two tendencies that seem to work against each other, right? On, on the one hand, you might say that if you have a final theory, some things, some questions become much more uh, substantially interesting, actually, than before the back, in the, on the background of, of, of the understanding of infinite theory succession, where, where you may always ask the question, okay, so I, I, I think about the way the world is like based on that theory, but on the other hand, I expect that at some stage it's going to be superseded anyway. So, so why should I be so interested in uh, developing the most consistent ontology of, um, let's say, non-relativistic quantum mechanics, if I know that actually, actually the world is, is relativistic, the world will, uh, it does include gravity and so on. So, so from that perspective, the fact, the mere fact that the theory has a, makes a final theory claim makes those ontological issues more, more interesting, actually, I would argue. The, of course, on the other hand, a situation where a theory is so chronically incomplete, and not just chronically incomplete, but, but shaky with respect to its fundamental principles, where you, you can never be sure that around the next corner you won't talk about a, a perspective that is completely different and uh, tells a completely different story with respect to, to options to, uh, to, to, to Im impute an ontology to the theory. Of course, that's, uh, that also reduces the, the, the relevance of, let's say, traditional methods to find an ontology with respect to one of those perspectives. However, I would argue it raises a more general question, which is, what to do with, with, with such a theory, if it is the case that, that this is the theory that, that, that characterizes nature, um, is there a way of asking ontological questions, let's say maybe metaphysical questions, um, that, um, that, 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 that works in, in, in this context? And I think that's a very fundamental and very interesting uh, question from a philosophy of physics perspective. I have two unrelated questions, and if I were polite, I'd ask one now and then leave the other one till later. But uh, experience shows that doesn't work because we never get to <laughs> ask the second question. So I'll ask them both, and, and you can decide uh, which, uh, well, I hope you ask, answer them both, but uh, it's up to you. Okay. Uh, the first question concerns finality. Um, 
And the, the suggestion that your thought began with is that if we had a completely unified theory that um, uh, accommodated all known data and successfully predicted lots of new data, and we had no reason to expect it would not continue to predict lots of new data, then it would be a final theory. That's to say it would satisfy all reasonable demands on, um, on what a, a perfect scientific theory can do. Uh, and it seems to me that there would be some people who would reject that. They would say, no, we want, uh, we have a higher standard uh, that we're trying to achieve in science. We're trying to um, understand what the world is like and merely being able to predict things isn't giving us the kind of understanding we want. Or we might have the, the ideals of, uh, of Einstein or of Bell and um, want to, to give a, a complete description, or, or the potential to give a complete description of fundamental reality. Um, and if quantum theory, and uh, sorry, if string theory is ultimately found on the principles of quantum theory, then there are a bunch of people out there thinking that uh, the principles of quantum theory are such that no quantum theory will ever give us a, uh, a complete, uh, the potential for a complete description of, of reality. So um, I think that the, the, the bar you set for a final theory will be rejected as too low by a number of people. Mm. But that's the, the first mm. question, if it was a question. Uh, the second one is just the thought that came into my mind, especially when we got to this, this latest view suggested by string theory. And here's the thought. Um, mathematics is very like that. Mathematics is continually developing, considering, continually um, making exciting connections between different yeah. areas of mathematics. Yeah. Yeah. No mathematician thinks there's ever going to be a complete of mathematics. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, um, and it doesn't seem to me to be a coincidence that uh, there's a heavy duty mathematics going on in string theory, and mathematicians are extremely interested in string theory. Maybe it's become a branch of mathematics, and uh, as such, it's a perfectly respectable thing, but uh, not really um, in the business of searching for a final scientific or physical theory. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very interesting question. The so, with respect to the first uh, question, I, I I fully agree that there are two, at least two, but but one may say very roughly two different views of what, what amounts to a, to a final theory. There is the perspective you were kind of alluding to, which, which um, Nick Rescher formulated as, as the final theory is, is the deepest possible understanding of, of how the, the world works. And then there is a admittedly much more modest perspective on the final theory, which is that a final theory is a, is, is a theory that will never be um, refuted by empirical data that, that, that contradicts it and that can account for all, all empirical data, data we have. So, so the, 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 the concept of final theory I use here is the more modest one. So, so I fully agree that some, that, that, that some philosophers of physics or philosophers of science would, would not call that a, a final theory. However, what I would want to point out is that, that this situation in string theory, the fact that duality relations play such, a, such an important, essential role for, for in, the, in the theory, makes it more difficult to understand what the other more ambitious un concept of a final theory could amount to, actually, because if you have those duality relations, and you and you say, okay, there are those different perspectives, empirically equivalent perspectives. What is so? So what? What could be the final theory then, in in in, in the sense of having the deepest possible interpretation? It seems rather that let's say it seems difficult to handle that concept. I don't say that it's absolutely impossible, but, but I say it's, it's much more difficult and probably one more reason in this, in this context to, 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 to use the more modest concept. That, that would be my, my, my answer to the first question. Um, with respect to the, the second question, the comparison between, between this situation and, and mathematics, I 
I would agree that, that there are structural similarities between what's going on here and what's going on in mathematics. However, there are also very substantial differences, which, which, which are that, that, that string theory answers to observations, to observational data we have collected and from which we have inferred the theories we want to unify based on, 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 on the posits of, of string theory, which means that the concept of <coughs> announcing a, a, a final theory in the sense that we have specified certain posits that if their implications are fully spelled out, amount to a theory that, that, that is not um, at variance with any empirical data that can be collected is a significant and substantial claim. While in, in mathematics, where there is, mathematics does not answer to any observations, that's a trivial claim. It is, it is something that is not at all interesting, which, which means that using that concept of a final theory in the context of mathematics is, is completely uninteresting. Therefore, no one would, would do that. So where it would be that um, if, if string theory is just a language, just a framework, then um, there are no posits. There's nothing to which it is responsible. So in that respect, it is like uh, mathematics. Um, um, I, I would strongly disagree with that. So, so right. the, the fact that I, I still, I, I do think that, that, that using the term language here is misleading. So, so because, for the very reason that, that it suggests this, uh, uh, this uh, conclusion. Um, clearly not everything, not every conceptual scheme is integrated into the web of, 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 of duality relations. So, so it's not the case that there are no posits. You start with some posits and then you understand that different sets of posits actually are connected to, to those ones by, by, by duality relations. But of course not all sets of posits are, are connected to each other. So, so it is not a language in the sense that it does not constrain the space of, of, of scientific representations. Thank you, thank you for the talk. I have also two probably examples here, I have also two, two questions slash comments. Uh, the first one is that uh, normally in the development of the physics, of physical theories, we uh, expect the new theory to take off at the point of the fundamental objects of the previous theory. In other words, if I am having a kinetic theory of the gases and I now have a more fundamental theory and that starts with atoms and electrons, and then I have a more fundamental theory in which I have quarks and things of the sort. I do not expect, I would not have expected a new more fundamental theory of whatever goes underneath quarks to start at the kinematic theory of the gases. Mm -hmm. it, but string theory has this feature that what it generalizes is the notion of particle. So I have a particle and I generalize it to this one dimensional object which is mm -hmm. a, a String. While we understand, and the, the best theory before, before the string theory was quantum field theory inverse space time, for which we clearly understand that the particle is a secondary notion, it's not a fundamental notion. The fundamental notion is the field, and I think that's why people at some point were developing string field theory mm. that apparently <coughs> somehow yeah. was lost in the. Yeah. In yeah. the in the past. So my first question would be, don't you think that if something like that is retaken, some approach like that is retaken, in that new extended framework, there would be more possibilities of extension that you cannot see at this level. So that's my first question. And the second one is that, also following on what Richard said, that if we expect the theory to provide an understanding of what the world is and what the world could be according to the theory, one of the things that I expect the theory to do is not, or a theory of quantum gravity to do, is not only to deal with calculations at regimes very close to the Planck scale, but to address questions that are uh, possible Gedanken experiment 
that had nothing to do with the Planck scale, but nevertheless involved quantum theory and gravitation. For instance, I would like to understand what, what is the space-time that is, uh, would be associated to a superposition of a huge mass, a moon being over there and in a superposition of being over there. What is the space-time of, of such, of such mass associated with such quant highly quantum mechanical uh, matter configuration? And my question is whether there is any sense in which string theory could respond or provide an answer to a question of that kind. Mm. So regarding the first question, it is true that that that, that the step from quantum from quantum field theory to to perturbative string theory is in, in a certain sense a step backwards, right? Because because what what, what you have in quantum field theory you have you have you have uh, an understanding of it. you have quantum field theory itself and you have the and you have the perturbative expansion in order to 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 calculate stuff so to say and um, while in string theory you don't know what the theory is you only have this perturbative approach towards it so in a sense you only have one might say in in, in some sense you only have this, this understanding in terms of of, 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 of extended objects of particles in, in some sense, in generalization of, of particles. However, of course it is, this is a, this is a concept, conceptual, uh, that this is a step backwards with regard to understanding the theory. What, what one may say is that, that we have a theory that, that is understood fairly well, not, not perfectly, but, but fairly well, which is quantum field theory. And then there is the move towards a theory where the, the understanding is much, less far-reaching. However, of course, the understanding is that, um, that there must be a more exhaustive understanding of non-perturbative aspects of string theory. It, it clear, it's clear that it's not a quantum field theory. It must be something different, but no one knows what it is. So one way to learn something about that is based on those duality relations. And the question is, it's not clear. So, so when, when, when M-theory was suggested, the understanding was, or the hope was, that M-theory would play that role, hope maybe. So, so M-theory maybe could be fully understood and would play the role that was played by, by, by uh, equivalent to quantum field theory, let's say, which did not work out. So. Now, at this point, it is not, not clear, clear how to understand, understand the situation, <coughs> but, but it, it doesn't mean that the theory itself, if you understand the full implications of, of, of the positive string theory as the theory, that the theory itself does not have implications at that level. It just means that they are not well understood. So, so, so I think one should distinguish here between level of understanding of the theory and what the theory actually may be expected to, to, to imply. Uh, with respect to, to the second question, um, string theory, of course, is a, is, is a quantum theory. At this point, it does not generate any uh, improved understanding of foundational matters of, 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 of of, of quantum mechanics, that, that, but, but, but it does not uh, contradict quantum mechanics either. So, so one may no, say that quantum it's... My, my point is quantum gravity. What yeah. is the metric of something like that? How, what framework does string theory contain that would co possibly provide me for a description of space-time that would be associated with such configuration? So what what you would have to do in order to to ask those questions is you need to you need to go to an effective uh, effective theory of of string theory. So so you would you would need to go down to to um, to look at at, at, at the supergravity theory as an effective theory of string theory, and um, then analyze the situa situations of that kind of at that level. So there is no it's not possible to to m make any strong predictions or any predictions at all actually from the fundamental level of string theory, all that can be said is that there are 
reasons to assume that um, string theory retains, retains GR and retains a formulation of, 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 of supergravity at an effective level. That's, that, that's what I can say. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, so I, I was curious about this thought that string theory provides something like a language, uh, trying to understand that, that idea. Because uh, kind of at first glance, it doesn't seem like a very good language if you can only formulate string theory in it and you can't you know, formulate other theories. But um, one, one, I, one way that you might think about what's going on here is something like uh, what metaphysicians might call a kind of special or privileged language. So um, this kind of idea comes up in, in metaphysics sometimes. People think that there's kind of some notion of fundamental property, and then the kind of privileged language is the one where its predicates all correspond exactly to the fundamental property, then there are no other predicates. And then this has been developed a bit by, by Ted Sider recently, who kind of extends it from just predicates to other kind of linguistic notions, including functions and, and those sorts of things. And that, I think, would fit with the idea that what we've got is a kind of, fi it would build the kind of finality claim in there, the suggestion that you made, um, because it would be kind of, now we have our language that is perfectly adapted to the, the kind of true fundamental theory, we're not going to need any, any other language ever. Um, we've kind of got the, the right language. Um, but then that isn't a particularly distinctive claim about string theory any longer. You could have made that claim about any fundamental theory. You could have made that claim about classical mechanics. That's kind of the, the correct language to use for classical mechanics that has only the predicates corresponding to the fundamental properties there. So then it doesn't look like a, a particularly new claim um, that string theory is, is making any longer. Is that maybe a, a way to understand what, what's going on here? Well, the, the, let's say, confusing point about, uh, about those suggestions, the suggestion like, like, like calling string theory a language, is the fact that, that w you would expect that, that if, if you use a specific language, you m may use it to to, to suggest or present posits that specify a certain scenario. While it is the very the, the core of, of, of the char character of string theory that you cannot do that. Right? that there, are no, there are no choices in, in developing a super uh, string theory, um, roughly, and um, there, are, there are no free parameters in the theory. So, so, so you cannot, you, 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 there is only exactly one way of developing a theory in that language, so to say. That's, that's the confusing thing. So on the one hand, one may see why people call it a language for this very reason, that, that you have those various formulations and you might even call different perspectives. For example, you, you might be tempted to call uh, the, the conformal field theory perspective a different language for, 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 for characterizing a black hole, let's say, than, 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 than the string theory on ADS space. However, there is no freedom here from, from a string theory perspective. And uh, what I suggest is that one way to, to understand <coughs> this is that in a situation where options are radically constrained due to, for consistency reasons, there is a kind of conflation between language and theory. Since, since if you find the right language, so to say, you, you have found the right theory because there is only one theory that can be built. Thanks very much. I wanted to ask about the landscape view, the anthropic principle. Um, I've always found that kind of stuff a bit <laughs> dissatisfying. Um, it seems to be a bit of a cop-out. It lacks explanatory power. It can't be either verified or falsified. Um, and there's certainly a tradition of the general philosophy of science with, with your theoretical principle. But specifically just in this case, um, on what basis do you think that it's a good characteristic for a final theory to have in general? or string theory here in particular, or is it simply a loop in the evolution of uh, string theory as a final theory that that particular step came up? 
Um, well, two, I think two levels of answering the question. The first level would be that <clears throat> there may not, whether we like it or not, let's say, it may not be a, an important issue if, 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 if that's what, uh, what the consistent representation of, of the da data enforces. That's, that's what, what we get, so to say. The, the different, if one nevertheless wants to, to evaluate that step, of course, it is in many respects a disappointing step. So it's clear that, that if one, would ex one might expect from a, from a final theory that it is highly predictive with, with respect to parameter values of, of, of the world we, we live in. And if it turns out that, it, that this, this um, predictive power is, is actually quite low, then is then is is disappointing. Now, supporters of entropic reasoning, on the other hand, uh, might argue that at a, at, from a different perspective, a, a very highly predictive theory would be unsatisfactory because it it would it would not it, it would still be it, it would remain unexplained why the fundamental principles of nature are the way that, 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 are, that, that enforce are, are, are such that they enforce those fine-tuned parameter values that um, make uh, human life possible. So, so in, in some way, one would say this is not explained, even, even if the fundamental theory um, allows to extract exactly those fine-tuned values, it still remains somewhat, somewhat weird. While, while and the supporter of anthropic reasoning would argue an anthropic situation where you have this huge spectrum of, 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 of worlds, of universes, and uh, which actually on the physical basis predicts the existence of a world that allows for life without any fine tuning, and then just uses the anthropic argument in order to explain why we li live in that world, provides a better explanation of that aspect. So, so I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that, that there are no reasons to be more satisfied uh, with such a situation than, than, than with a more predictive one. So then putting it up a, a higher level then, irrespective of the debate whether like what counts as satisfactory explanation or not, is in, in terms of you, the landscape of theories or, or characteristics, general characteristics of theories, do you think that something like that would be a characteristic of any final theory? To have a landscape uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, it, it seems plausible that, that, that there is a landscape, but, but I wouldn't want to speculate on that. Yeah. Was in Rick's turn, but he just went out. Okay, he <laughs> holds. Yeah. So, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, um, maybe the, the most uh, pronounced predictive successes of string theory claim successes are for the cosmological constant in an anthropic setting, what you can have. So, since they do proclaim that they can, they can uh, recover the actual values in a standard deviation or so. But, I'm very worried about, about their reasoning um, because it's, it, it contains so many, so much of what in the social sciences is now called researcher's degree of freedom, right? You can play around with the, with the observer proxy. They stigmatically now take, for instance, um, entropy production and with a, um, they, they use a measure over for, for how, to, how to weight observer. They use sometimes to call it a diamond, but if it doesn't work, they use something else. So I think it's really <coughs> easy, uh, even if you are, if you are well-intentioned and, and only interested in the, in, 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 the, in the flourishing of science to deceive yourself and produce exactly the right results because you have an idea of what it will be. So I'm very skeptical here. Do, do, you, do you share that skepticism uh, or do you have more optimism? Well, I... I I would think, I, mean, I, I completely agree that, that is, it's very difficult to, to, to assess the significance of those, of, of those predictions. Yeah. I, I wouldn't say that, 
that there is no significance to that. that I, I, I think that to a certain degree, I mean, one, what one must say is that, that the entropic prediction of, of, the, of the cosmological constant by, by Weinberg is, has, was, uh, was before the cosmological constant was found. Uh, so it is a, let's say, it, it is a genuine novel prediction, in, which, which may suggest that, it, it, which, which doesn't mean that it, that it, that it is reliable, but, but which uh, suggests, um, so let's say, it is, it, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have anything to do with string theory, but string theory provides a basis for, 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 for giving substance to that argument. And of course, the same, the same issues are, are applicable to, to, to Weinberg's prediction. And uh, one may say that, that if something is a novel prediction, it may still suffer from, from, from those uh, vagueness issues. And the fact that the prediction was successful doesn't remove those vagueness issues, but at any rate, it, it, it removes some of the suspicion that those uh, vagueness issues were exploited in order to generate the, the, the correct prediction. So, so I, I would say, I would agree that, that one feels a little uncomfortable with, with, with those predictions, um, but I would not say that they are without any value. Um, so uh, I just wanted to ask you this: when you say a final theory, you are thinking about the landscape. You are thinking about all possible compactification. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If if if, if the landscape is, is is an actual prediction of of, of string theory. Yeah. And, and in this, in, when you say the, the final, when you think about this M theory with the, with the, with the given, but if there's so much room for developing the connection between these, how, I mean, is there a basis to say it's a final theory if there's still so much to develop, or is that all included within this red uh, construction of the theory? You think the, yeah, my, I mean, my, my argument would be that, so there is this issue whether at this stage one, one should already, one should call this a theory. From my understanding, one essential criterion for whether or not one, one should call something a, a theory is whether or not one expects that what one ha knows about the theory uniquely determines the theory. Even though I, 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 don't, I haven't fully understood the situation, but, but, but I can expect that if I, if I fully grasp what is implied by, by, by the deposits I have made, I end up with one specific formulation. And um, of course, one cannot be entirely sure about that with, with respect to string theory, but but it is a very plausible assumption that this is the case. And, and so far, there have been very many steps in the development of string theory, and none of that steps has shattered that ex ex exp expectation in any way. And so just one final uh, thing. How much of a role do you think that uh, falsified uh, expectations or hopes of the theory, let's say, like Whitten was saying in 2001 mm. that he was expecting the technological constant measurements that were to be positive to actually be wrong, that they would turn out to be negative and, and, and supersymmetry. And how much of a role should they play in our belief that this is a final theory? This is a final theory. Yes. So, so in, in this talk, I didn't address the, the issue of reasons for trust or distrust the theory at all, right? So, so of course, what one may say with respect to those to, 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 to suggestions of, of, of that kind is that it, it, it demonstrates some degree of overconfidence with, with respect to, to, to making inference 
hypothesis from, from, from a theory, which of course does not only happen in string theory, but it happens in all, in all contexts of, of, of physics or, or, or science. So, of course, this also suggests that one might um, not entirely rely on individual assessments about the status of the, of, of, of the theory by, by, by individual exponents of, 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 of the theory. So, so in this sense, from, let's say from an outsider, outside observer's perspective, one would take that into account and say, okay, so the fact that, that they are so confident maybe is not is not overly reliable. On the other hand, what one might point out is that, that of course, the, the, those assessments, which are ne have never been understood as actual implications of the theory, but, but they were just um, based on, let's say, of, of, of expectation, expectations with respect to the way the theory would play out. They, of course, they are, they should not be equated with respect to, to, to the substance of, 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 of the theory itself. Do you think if they had been observed, they would have entailed a prediction? I don't think so, actually. I, I think it, 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 would, it's, it, was not, it was never a case that, it was never suggested by anyone that this is actually a prediction of, 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 of the theory. Okay, final question to Daniela. Yeah, first of all, the clarification. So, at some point, there was, and I don't recall that, but the, the idea that uh, when we talk about string theory, we're really secretly talking about M theory, and whose different limits are the gravity, which is just a classical limit, and the various types of string theory, which is found on different backgrounds and, and different compatibilizations. What happens to change that perspective? So is, is, there, is there some result that shows that that <coughs> picture is wrong? Cannot be the case that there is an underlying theory with different limits? Or is it just that people didn't manage? Uh, it's it's to people didn't in, people didn't manage. Mm -hmm. so. Because if you get the second case, it's, it seems to me a very weak uh, motivation for. Uh, arguing for a different perspective on your framework. We're still talking just about a, a, a theory that we don't know. And, and uh, you can use it as a framework in the sense that you can take a network of partial theories or mathematical formulas that, that we know and use it as a mathematical language to, uh, to be applied to different contexts. Yeah. And then yeah. it really looks like you really use a, a sub-branch of mathematics or mathematical physics and with enough clever people and enough time, you obtain a huge amount of interesting results that, in this sense, in the sense of further developments or uh, different ways of using the framework and so on. Yeah, yeah. But from the physics point of view, we're still possibly just talking about the theory that we didn't manage to define. Especially when you say that we have a, that everything is compatible with the principles of quantum mechanics. It means that we are talking, if we are talking about a theory that we don't know, if we are talking about uh, some set of degrees of freedom organized in a Hilbert space, or some algebra observables that we didn't manage to identify clearly, for which we take limits and approximations. But then there's not much to discuss in terms of changing the picture of theory itself. It's, it's, it's a standard theory that we just didn't manage to construct. Well, uh, so it's it's absolutely it's it's, it's correct that that, uh, that that the reason why why work on M theory um, is not is not highly popular at this point is not that anyone has shown that there is no such fundamental theory, but yeah 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 yeah, but. Uh, uh, the, so right, so so th there is there is one option that actually this this was the, the wrong way to look at the situation. There is the other option that there is this uh, this uh, dual relation towards the theory that that, that does not have a, um, a a classical limit and and that will on its own characterize fully characterize the theory. So it's not clear 
uh, what, what actually is the case. The one additional reason, however, one, one has to emphasize why, why this has become less in, in the foreground of investigations is ADS-CFT correspondence and the understanding that actually one can make interesting inferences about string theory based on looking at the, at, at, at the CFT side of, of, of the duality, for example, with respect to, to, to black hole information and, and so on. So, so, so it, the other half of the story is that it turned out that actually it is more, not just that it's not very helpful to try to, 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 to find M theory at this point, but also that it is much more helpful, much more constructive to look at entirely, in entirely different directions yeah. along uh, duality relations. So, so it's not just that, that they didn't find the theory. That, that is one part of, of what, I, what I would answer. The second part is that, of course, whether or not there is M theory, what, what remains is that if if M theory can be formulated, it, it is implied by, by, by the theories that, that have those classical limits. So, so it is still, it's not, you don't add anything to, to the theory. So it does, it, the, the existence of, of, of an M theory formulation that, that fully uh, characterizes the theory and allows for, for extraction of, of predictions and all, all that things does not imply uh, that, um, that we have less reason to talk about the theory based on, 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 the, on the constructions that, that are available at, at this point, I would say. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, let's thank Richard again. <laughs>